A tech savvy rider implemented new technology to modify his 2015 GL 1800 Honda Gold Wing. That Gold Wing later became known as Black Flash, an extreme lighting show bike. What's going on YouTube? This is your boy Carnell, the Tech Savvy Rider. Hey, today is Saturday. I wanted to go over a uh, what I'm doing for uh, Black Flash. Uh, some of you like to try to uh, keep up with what I'm doing uh, on my bike. You know, you might want to try to experiment some of the stuff that I be uh, that I be doing. And I have no problem showing you uh, how I'm how I do things. Um, back in the past. Wingding 40, uh, I switched over to a dual battery setup, but I was using a battery isolator, meaning that I had a primary battery and my secondary battery was basically for me to be able to restart my bike. I, I had a backup battery where I could switch over to a parallel mode by using an isolator so I can get my bike started just in case the primary battery died. Now, since Wingding 40, I have added two controller box to my light system, 6 and 7, and I added over 500 LEDs from Wingding 40 to Wingding 41. Now, Wingding 41, I had switched over to a primary and secondary battery using them in parallel mode well both batteries which is here was running my bike light show and I was still having issues what I recommended uh, from a friend of mine who suggested that I switch out my batteries so now I'm taking his advice and I switched out to the XP 750 uh, battery and I'm running it in parallel mode meaning that Negative is connected to negative. Positive is connected to positive. Now, in this setup, I wanted to strictly show you that these larger batteries do fit into the gold wing in the primary box, but you have to cut off the top. The adjustments I had to make was the bar that hold the battery in place. I had to take it out straighten it out bend it reshape it and start it back over to get it shaped to fit this new battery so you do have to do some adjustments now for my secondary battery like i said i'm running in parallel mode i had to create a a basically a case where i could hold my secondary battery in my saddlebag without it sliding back and forth so it's pretty good it's pretty good setup and within this box, I got all of my controllers located in the box with my battery separated. So even though this looks like a great big old mess to you, it is actually very simple. I'm the type of person I believe in the KISS system. Keep it simple, stupid. I mean, there's no other way to put it. If I have problems with either one of my controllers, I can simply come in pull out that controller do the work on that controller and go back to it if i have a problem with my wiring for as my positive all my positive wiring is on one connection all my negative wiring is on another connection so they are basically layered positive negative and if i have any wiring problems with my controller lights these are the lights going to each one of my, uh, these are the ribbons that are going to each one of my, uh, my LEDs on my bike. No matter how you wire your bike, if someone can look at your work and say, man, this is confusing, then you're already messed up. You need to keep it as simple as possible, as, 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 as simple as you possibly can. 
So for someone else to come behind me and look at my bike and they figure, well, something is not being charged. One of the controllers is not connected to a positive or it's not receiving a positive connection or it's not grounded. They should have no problem coming into my bike and saying, okay, let me check his positive wires. Each one of his positive wires is going to a controller. Five is labeled, four is labeled, three is labeled, etc. Six and seven is over here in the corner. Positive connection on the battery here. Negative connection on the battery here. Going to the negative connection on the battery over here. If one of my LEDs is not properly lighting, okay, positive, negative. Now look for my ribbon for my LEDs. I have to figure out which controller that that LED is on. Me personally, for me, number five, I have a list of all the ribbons that are listed for that controller. All I got to do is figure out which one is, is on. Okay, this ribbon, your engine cover LED. Look at my paper. It's on controller number four. Find controller number four cable ribbon and go to work. Pull out number four cable. I mean, pull out number four controller. Find a ribbon that's going to the engine cover and repair it. Simple. Keep it simple. That was the whole thing I was saying about uh, working, doing the work yourself. You got to keep it as simple as possible so when you go back to it and you find something is wrong, you got a way to go back into it without going through every little thing that you did trying to figure out what wire is going to what wire. Now, the second thing I want to bring up is the battery. Now, I understand that every battery has to be charged before you actually try to use them. So I got my primary battery and my secondary battery on its own tender charging cord. So the primary has its charging cord and the secondary battery has its charging cord. If I want to charge my primary battery, all I got to do is plug it in from my battery tender, find the cable. I most likely will have the cable for the, for the primary battery up under the saddle bag over here somewhere. Pull that cable and plug it in. Wait for the charging to come on. Wait for it to start charging. Once it's fully charged, then I can come over and do the same thing to my secondary battery. Now, a good positive charge, even though the, the battery tender, when it comes up, it's going to say that this battery is charged, you still need to use a voltmeter to verify what's the amps on that battery. So, a, we'll wait until that come up, make sure it's good to go. But meanwhile, for my battery in my saddlebag, if I need to charge the battery in my saddlebag, just simply pull my cable, open up my saddlebag, pull my cable, and make the connection. All right, right now the primary battery is blinking green. When it turns solid green, we'll use the voltmeter to test it. But because the battery is, I'm going back to my saddlebag battery, but because the battery is in my saddlebag, I will have to leave my saddlebag open during the processing of it being charged. Now I have a 12 volt system using dual battery that's in parallel mode for my next contest. With the type of amperage, with, type, with the parallel connection for this setup, you should never have to see me go back in or run back to my bike, turn it on, put it in high idle, and trying to high idle my bike to, just to keep the light show going. This setup is perfect, and it will keep me from having to do all that. Now, the biggest thing I want to bring out about this setup, especially building a box for your left saddlebag. Now, this means that weight is on your left saddlebag, which meaning that the bike will have a more lean error, uh, lean uh, for when you're riding down the road. You can feel it. Uh, the left side of your back might start hurting or something like that. That means that your bike is unequal, uh, is, is not equal when it's riding down the road. It's not parallel with the road. 
So that means you got weight going on the left side, which meaning that your bike is leaning to the left. So it's most likely going to be going to the right. You have to balance this weight load if you decide to do anything inside your bat or inside your saddlebag. That's going to cause more weight to be on that side. So for me, I estimate this is a couple of pounds. And I try to equal that same couple of pounds with something in the right side of my saddlebag. For me, it'll be my tool kit. So even though my controllers and my battery is in my left saddlebag, that same amount of weight is in my right saddlebag by using my tool bag. It balances out. So you don't feel that weight discomfort riding down the road going on. Uh, going down the road okay now the battery tender as you can see is green that means that the battery tender is saying that this battery is fully charged so let's disconnect the battery tender i highly recommend using a voltmeter to still recheck your battery to see what's your amperage on your on your uh on your battery this particular voltmeter I probably put a link on it. I like it because it is a clamp voltmeter where you can basically clamp it anywhere. And it's small and it's lightweight and it's very doable. And I probably post a link of where you can get this one from. And it has its own little tote bag. <laughs> I love this thing. Uh, this is the actual name of it. It's called Digital Clamp uh, Multimeter. And like I said, it's simple, it's lightweight, it's very to you, easy to use, and it comes with instructions on what each one of these are used for. So, we're going to check the battery. That's the symbol for the battery connection there. We're going to plug in the battery. What we're looking for is to make sure that the battery connection is at least 12, uh, is, 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 is the, the voltage is at least at 12 or higher. I highly like 14. So let's go to it and check it. I might be saying both. I might be saying amps. Uh, I'm thinking of certain things, so bear, bear it with me. But you know what I mean. So let's check it. Let's check the votes. 12 votes. Positive, positive, negative to negative. And right there, it is saying 13.36. So that's automatically telling me that it's good. Now that I have had my battery tender connected to the battery, and the battery tender is telling me it's fully charged, and the voltmeter is telling me it's fully charged, because it's over 12 point, it's over 12 volts. I should not have any issues from this point on running my bike. When my primary battery is getting charged. It is charging my secondary battery. So there is no issue of me having to have any power to run my bike. Now, I haven't started my bike. So let's verify that this is all working. And of course, like I tell you, I always show you my first whatever, starting it up, first installation. If it mess up, you witnessed it. If it don't and it works perfect, you witnessed it. I'm just showing you the different things that you have to do in order to run dual battery setup in parallel mode. And of course, as you can see back here in the back back here, I do have a hose going through the back end of my saddlebag so I can connect from the primary and secondary battery using the battery cables. So you have to make that type of connection some type of way and for me the only way i could do it was to cut a small hole through the back of the saddle bag and connect it so this is the first run for the motorcycle let's start it up check it and like i said if it go up in flames you witnessed it here we go all right Bike starting up. All my lights are off. I turn my lights on for each controller. Connecting to my controller, 
and the controllers are connected to the secondary battery. I have a switch up here at the front to turn all my lights on once they are on. So now I have no problem running all my lights on my secondary battery, which is in parallel mode, meaning that both batteries are running to keep my bike going and to keep my lights going. And I never should have to run up to my throttle, turning my throttle, trying to charge my system. Good to go. Now that's my demonstration for the day. I just wanted to show you the difference. And last year when I used my isolator on my secondary battery, I was using a primary and a secondary battery using an isolator, meaning the isolator would turn that secondary battery into a parallel mode where if I needed to start my bike because my primary battery was dead, then my isolator could switch over to the secondary battery to help the bike start up. This year, I'm running the bike in parallel mode, meaning positive to positive, negative to negative. Both batteries are simultaneously running together. With it running in parallel mode, I'm still getting at least 12.4 volts as long as it is positive to positive, negative to negative. All my lights are hooked up to the secondary battery. My secondary battery, I want to make sure you understand this. My secondary battery has all my positive connections. My primary battery has all my negative connections. So primary, I mean, my primary is negative. My secondary is positive. That way, both batteries are being used at the same time. That will conclude my spiel for the day, YouTube. I hope you liked this video. And I'm trying to keep y'all posted as I bring Black Fast back up. Uh, from all the lessons that I've learned from Wingding 41, I'm preparing my bike for Wingding 42 in slow stages. So, to me, this is maintenance week, but because I am back at work and I can only work on the weekend on my bike, it's probably going to turn into maintenance month. So, bear with me. What I'm doing, I bring it to you, let you know what I'm doing. Other than that, it's my spiel for the day, YouTube. Y'all have a good one. GoPro, stop recording. A tech-savvy rider implemented new technology to modify his 2015 GL1800 Honda Goldwing. That Goldwing later became known as Black Flash, an extreme lighting show bike.